So why don't you guys eat pork? <laughs> oh, <laughs> right out right. of the gate. Right, right out, out of the gate. gate. Picks for everyone. Woo! <laughs> 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 Go right into it. That's a good question because... Uh, uh, you wanted me to get to the whys. Uh, I yeah. said, hey, yeah. we got some home runs. You, you want some home run for this? We're going to get into your whys. Right, and that's something that comes up on our channel because I do mention yeah. it from time to time that we don't eat it. And uh, it's not something that we try to, to bash other people on the head with. It's just something that we share. We've been convicted. Uh, it started off with my father years ago when, when I was a kid. I want to say probably 10 years old or something like that. He just stopped, stopped eating pork, and then I didn't. And I just mostly kind of did it because he didn't do it. Yeah. But then over time, I was like, well, as I just started assessing things, went into my teenage years, I just questioned a lot, questioned a lot about religion question a lot about life, and uh, mm. I just didn't have, uh, and I almost just kind of left, I would say, the faith during that time just because I was questioning so many things. The faith. What's the faith? Uh, I'd say the faith of Christianity or the faith of uh, faith in God, as you're just, you have these questions and they're not getting answered, and you're just looking around. We went to all kind of different churches. You went to with me for a number of different churches, but during that time of just She's trying laughing. to figure out where I wanted to be, I just kind of started just reading the Bible for myself and seeing what mm. the Bible actually says. And as I come across that and I see that it's, it's pretty clear, uh, I decided to refrain from eating pork and continue on. I'll let you Why is she too. laughing? Why are you laughing right there <laughs> when, when you went to all these churches? When, when we were... We were dating at the time, and he's like, "Hey, let's go somewhere this evening." And I'm like, "Okay." And it was Jehovah's Witness Church. Uh, <laughs> I'm picking on him. Now wait, this, this is your idea for a date? Not, it's not, I'm wait, not Mike, laughing at this Jehovah's is an Witness. idea for a date? <laughs> church? Was I mean, it a date? Been, or was no, it, like, it wasn't a date. We okay. had been dating a long time. Yeah. So you we'll guys were. Yeah, this was not a first date. Yeah, like we're just here together. <laughs> we're just like he's like, "Hey, go with me here," but I didn't know, and I'm not bashing Jehovah's Witness either. It was just funny that. I had no clue where we were going, and then yeah. that's where we showed up. <laughs> so it was like more surprising Sorry than anything. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> is this the first <laughs> time you've apologized for that? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see how much of a curveball it was until just now. <laughs> By the way, this is it's funny thinking back on it. Just like, oh yeah, that was yeah. kind of a that's little... hilarious. But we went a little all over. So you went everywhere. We did because I had just questions. Like, I was like, you I want to know. Like having questions in the Christian faith, you were like. We're gonna look at other faiths. Sure, exactly right. We're going everywhere. And I was like, I want to know that God's real. I don't want to just a blind faith. I like, I want to know. And, and and the Bible says, test and prove all things, and hold fast to that was good. It doesn't just say blindly believe. Yeah. yeah. And I was doing it. I was like, I had questions on why should I even believe the Bible? Why this? Why that? Why life? And and then as I more just tried to get grounded in that, um, you started didn't getting go things answered and witness. answered. Yeah. Well. What did you well, think? Well, I mean. So, I grew up eating pork and everything. Okay. I mean, my neighbors would have a hog killing every year that we would go to and all. And as we were, when we first met, I grew up in a Methodist church. That's where I went my whole life. He went there for a little while. We went, okay, so we did Jehovah's Witness. We went to a Pentecostal church for a while. We did like speaking in the tongues. Yeah, we did non denominational and all of that. And all of those things. It like came to one point and then he started learning more about the holy days in the Bible and, and things like that and really digging in. Mm. And um, he would show me certain things and it would it was like a point of contention in our marriage. It got to that point where I was mm -hmm. like, don't talk to me about this. Don't talk to me about this. Because it was different than what I had grown up with. And um, I remember... We were living in this little duplex. We'd only been married like a, a little over a year. And um, I'm like, God, you show me what I'm supposed to do. Mm. That was my prayer. I was like, I don't know. Like, this is coming between us. You show me what we're supposed to do or what I'm supposed to do. And um, Isaiah 58 came to mind. And, uh, like, and my Bible was right there in front of me. So I flipped to Isaiah 58 and verses 13 and 14 are all about keeping the Sabbath. Mm. Mm. And that was the one thing, what was one of the one things we were learning and all. And um, I was like, well, I can't deny that. Like I asked. Mm -hmm. And if I was to deny that, then I would deny God. Mm. And because all that I time asked. That she was going through that and we were going through that together. I, it was also a, a dominant prayer in my life that we would be on the same page, that God would say, put us on the same page here. 
We want to, I, I'm going to follow you, God, and do what you say, but please let my wife and I be on the same page about this. Mm-hmm. And all, all of that, like, wraps into the not eating pork yeah. and keeping the Sabbath and the Holy Days. Yeah. Like, all of that's together. So I guess, mm-hmm. you know, the whole pork question turned into a whole bunch more. I'm going to ask a question. Did you yeah, I figured it would. Yeah. <laughs> Con- and, and people are maybe afraid to ask that question. You said it was contentious, him, him trying to convert you, I don't know, convince you. Uh what was the contention? Did you just love bacon so much? <laughs> I'd say part of it was probably me just saying, oh, man, I'm seeing this. I'm reading yeah. this. Read this. Yeah. Oh, it, I'm seeing this. I'm seeing this. Read this. <laughs> it was more of like just shoving Were you excited? Stuff. I sure was. Yeah. It was like I had new eyes. Yeah. Like I, okay. I saw things that I did not see before. Okay. And it, it that was the contentious point is it was – and also like things that I've – grown up with yeah. my whole life mm-hmm. and you know whenever you're making like such a big change and shift mm-hmm. it's hard and like I wanted to know that that was what I was supposed to do that's why I asked that question God what am I supposed to do and I'll follow whatever you want me to do but I need to know that that's the right before I start going down that road because it can be a difficult road because you worry about relationships that you have and, you know, how is this going to affect my family relationships with my mom and my dad and my other family, Mm -hmm. and which it definitely, you know, in the beginning definitely did cause some, uh, I don't want to say anger, but maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there there is, um, like, you you were raised that way, and they obviously raised you. Yes. That way. And so then when you change, they feel like you're saying you like, did wrong. Exactly. But you, you're not exactly. saying that. Mm-hmm. And I don't like that. It's, it's, it's very hard, though. Oh, it's I, very hard. And to, Rebecca are very much the same that yeah, way. I, I'm the I, same way. I don't like to disappoint people. You disappointed plenty of people saying, no thanks to the ham. Yeah. 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 So it's, you had to know yeah. that this was right. Yeah. And it wasn't just the pork. It was, you know, like like I said, it was like all these other yes. things yeah. too. Yes. So it was, yeah, it, it was you, hard. If you keep the Sabbath rules, I mean, some people will uh, not start up their car because yeah. there's a fire involved in that. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> some people won't cook mm-hmm. that day. Some people turn their power off. Yep. Yeah. They will go down and turn off the main breaker because yeah. yeah. it takes a fire to get energy yeah. through the lines. Mm-hmm. And th- these aren't necessarily things that do we you, do, but we do you take that, that yeah. far. No, <laughs> no, no, we don't. don't. Yeah. Each person has to once again test and prove for themselves what what they must do in their walk with God, and, uh, and that's just what we have to do. And, yeah. and even thinking throughout the Bible, another just the Bible again, examples of people having whether it be Abraham leaving his country and his family to serve God. That was not easy. Yeah. Even the Israelites when they were leaving Egypt. <laughs> They were used to comfortable in Egypt. That's why they kept wanting to go back. But no, they left, and God's like, no, follow me. And even p- people following Christ and who willing to put themselves, their lives on the line, it was not easy. To follow God yeah. is not easy all, a lot of the time. Well, Daniel got put in the lion's den. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many different examples in the Bible of people doing way harder things to follow God than I've had to do. Uh, so. Yeah, it was kind of like... I don't know if we, if we want to go there or not, but it kind of felt like uh, churches, when COVID came out, people were having to wrestle in America for the first time, am I going to go to church and do something I feel like I should do that is my Christian duty, but here's the government saying, you can't go to church. Yep, yep, and that is... Uh... You can't gather 10 or more. Yeah, that's exactly right, and it was uh, uh, it put a lot of people's faith. It uh, forced them to test their faith mm-hmm. to see really wh- where it was, mm. and yeah. we went through that. And we actually had to leave a fellowship that we were in because of that. Yeah. Because it's like mm. ultimately we obey God. We follow what He says, mm-hmm. no matter what the government says. Same thing has happened to Daniel. He yeah. wasn't going to bow down to the idol. The government said to do that, but he wasn't going to do that. He's like, no, yeah, um, I'm going to pray to my God. Three times, like it was yeah. his custom, and he's like, "I'm not bound down to your idol." Yeah, yeah. and I'm not going to do it in a it, closet somewhere either. I no. mean, he opened he his was, window. He's, <laughs> his window's open. He's like, "Okay, I'm going to do it, and you can see me do it, and I'm just going to mm-hmm. disobey what that government says, and I'm going to, you know, worship my God, and that's what I'm going to do." Yeah, he didn't hide his faith. Yeah. God talks about uh, let your light shine so that the world sees it, and be a salt to the earth. 
That's exactly what Daniel did. Yeah. He wasn't afraid. It seemed like maybe it was a little tricky or sneaky or something. It's like, that's obvious. Yeah. They want you to bow down to an auto idol. Um, okay, yeah. Yeah or no. Okay, yeah. But you also have very heavy consequences. Sure, like yeah. you could get killed. Exactly right. So here on the other hand, well, you're not allowed to gather, but that's something that you feel like you should do. Um but it's 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 a message of oh we're gonna keep everybody safe this type of thing, so maybe it's a little more subtle or something I don't know, but it's like the, we, the, the waters were definitely muddied. Oh yeah, it's yes. not like it was clear like with Daniel. Yeah, this was like the waters were more muddied. It was more of like a we're doing this for your safety. So then if you choose to gather, then you're not being safe. There was some, they could even pull that love, um, love one another, treat others yeah. as you would want to be treated. That's too. what makes deception, deception mm. yeah, and compromise, compromise. It starts okay. with a little thing. It doesn't start okay. with a big thing. I'm sure yeah. Daniel yeah. had smaller things. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to all of a sudden, somebody's going to have an idol out in front of us. No. It'd be like, you have to bow down. Incremental <laughs> changes. Wow. Okay. So that was revealing. To and you, also, at your time, because you all had to go through it, it sounds like. You're sure. talking about moving congregation. What'd you call it? Yeah, we, I call it fellowship. Fellowship. So yeah. You moved your fellowship. <laughs> yeah. uh, we left who we You we had, had to make been. this decision. Sure did. Once again, yeah. it, it was that decision of, are we going to people please here? Yeah. Or are we going to do what God, what we God feel said. God is telling us to do? And you felt like God telling you Got to keep go. going with what God says to do. Because also it says, forsake not the assembling of oh, yourselves. Yes. Okay. And do so even more as you see the day of Christ's approach, uh, day of okay. his coming approaching. All right. So as we get closer to that time, that means it's even more important for us to assemble and to be together. And when we were at uh, Polyface for the event that we had there at Joel's, mm -hmm. and they had the Weston A. Price people there, and there was there was like 300 people gathering there, and it was just so neat. And you saw the emotion there of people who hadn't gathered together with people pretty much that whole year, mm -hmm. and they're in tears because they have an opportunity to be with people again and yeah. to see their yeah. full face and that emotion it just touched me in a, in a deep way and it shows yeah. how important it is that we need each other and we see that in the homestead it's like and in farming you can't segregate and have monocultures it's it all works together in a system and in community and that's what we need as people we need community we need each yeah. other He's getting excited. Man. I am. You, you yeah. cranking him down over there? <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike warned us. I get excited. We finally got it. We hit a nerve. We finally need to go. We got the nerve, so we're going to go down that vein a little bit there. So, yeah, so when people started gathering again, I think we realized um, we definitely took it for granted. I mean, this is something yeah. we... Yeah, like we, normal life. Yep. You took normal life for granted. Yeah, like it was like, oh, this is normal, and then it wasn't. Although, I have to say, like... I wasn't mad about quarantining. <laughs> Welcome to the homestead life, y'all. I life, like being home. I It was like finally an excuse. I didn't have to go anywhere. Nobody was inviting us anywhere. We were just staying home. She was and using it as an excuse. I was okay with it to an extent. I mean, because like, you know, we do leave. Like we had events that had been planned mm -hmm. that we were supposed to attend. And then we couldn't do that anymore. So then that was kind of a bummer. But um now, I like to leave occasionally. Somebody who I don't want to be home for forever. Yeah, yeah. You know, some somebody like yourself who loves freedom, you definitely have to. Eventually, yeah. You you like to, to be home. I do like, but to be home. but you don't like somebody telling you I don't what you can and, and cannot do. Can. Can I do? And and she's <laughs> she used to be a rule follower. Yeah, I mean, I still am to an extent. Not really, though. I guess. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I mean, are y'all rule followers? I feel like I've, I've I've gone a little all over the place with that in my life, but I try to find. I think there's a balance. I think that there's a balance because we do need to follow rules, but then also time we do need to have self autonomy to make our own decisions because that's how we grow as care in our character and human beings. If somebody's just constantly telling us what to do, then we're just robots and slaves, yeah. and, and that's not what that's not what we should be. Mm. Yeah. It's interesting because I, I I said one time to a therapist of mine, I was like, you know, I'm a rule follower in some things, but in other things I'm really not. And she's like, well, that's because you've – your rules, you've made you're, – you're following the rules that you've made and you follow those rules. You don't follow what other people tell you yeah. you should follow. Yeah. And I was like, oh. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. how I am. And, and the Bible so, talks yeah. about that, I too. I follow my own rules. It talks about submitting mm-hmm. to the authorities, but then it says obey oh, God rather yeah. than man. There's that balance there. And, and that's another benefit of a that's real benefit true. of why God's word is important. It's not me deciding for myself what's right and what's wrong. It's like, all right, what does God say? That's my plumb line of what's right and what's wrong and what I should and shouldn't do. It's not me saying, oh, I, don't, I just want to assemble because I, I, or, or not be at home because that's what I want to do. No, it's just what we should do. Mm. It's not so good for man to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and when that was written, what you're speaking of was written in, in a time where the government was very... Is that exactly right? Yep. Yep. Sure was. Compared to the government we're under, you know? Yep. Yep. So he was saying, whatever it is, submit to the authorities. What is it? I don't remember the full verse, but I think it might be in Romans. And, and they were under the Roman it's rule, and they had to submit it? to that. And um, and he was encouraging that in yep. the scripture. So do, yeah, you guys are trying to find this balance. Exactly right. Yeah. Of when do I submit to the government? Like the scripture says, and then when do I follow God's rules? Yep. That's because right. even though uh, many of the apostles they were they were tried their best to follow the the governing rules, but as it didn't overtake God's rule, yeah. because ultimately that's what they died for, following God. And they said the government said, "Don't preach in Christ's name." They were like, uh, "Can't obey you on that one." So they went uh-huh. and did it. They got in trouble. They got beaten, put in jail, and ultimately <laughs> stoned to death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had someone on here that said that they were gonna if they went to the gathering the the church mm. that there were p- neighbors taking pictures yeah to people going that's sad to turn them in telling that's sad how, that how could you i could not live I'm with myself like, when i'm turning my neighbors in you know i have my rules but like i don't make other people follow no, my rules no, no. do you know what i mean yep. like yep. i just, do you and i'll do you. <laughs> right i mean yep. i feel like a lot of times it's like the the fact that they wanted to control those people so badly i'm like you really need to look at your life and be exactly like right. what is what is causing exactly me right. to desire to control other people and it's scary to think honestly, about honestly i really don't care what other people do yeah. i mean like don't yeah don't yep. come in my lane don't yep. tread on me but, but like <laughs> yep Yep. Do what you're gonna do exactly over right. there. Yeah. Exactly right. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I don't I don't understand that level of or desire for control of others. And it's dangerous when we're we're reporting our neighbors to the authorities for things like that. Just think about the trajectory of where that could go. That's just scared to think about. It is. It's- do you always think in these terms, the trajectory of where that could go? <laughs> this is a this is a macro perspective. Uh, or has he learned that? Now, Lacey, I should, Lacey, what are you, why are you laughing? <laughs> he does talk like this. I mean, I mean, the, thinking in the terms of the macro, like, where is this going? We do think that's about an inter- this. That's a good perspective, we all, we all, no matter we, what we you were talking about. We talk to our kids about. about this, too. Mm-hmm. We talk to our kids about, you know, look what's going on, and for them to see, and... You know, it makes me feel good when we're listening to something or, or something, and my kids are like, that's not right. That's not right. And mm. I mean, just watching TV. We don't watch much TV. Right. But if but we they're do, being trained to like see right from wrong. Yes. Mm. And they'll see pharmaceutical commercials on TV, <laughs> and they're like, never listening to that. I'm not, because I mean, we've told them, and, yeah. and they know the. Well, I mean, if you just the, listen to the commercial, they'll, exactly. they'll tell you the side effects of it. You know, <laughs> Sudden death is something that, you know, I try to avoid. So, I mean, He's trying not to or suddenly die. explosive diarrhea. I mean, who wants that as a side effect to anything, yeah. right? Why would I want to take something that I could suddenly die from? Hmm. Yeah. So, like, we do talk about these mm. big things and where these things can go. And, I mean, it's not this heavy all the time at our house or anything. But, you know, we want our kids to be aware. We want to talk about it. Yeah. So yeah. um, they can see where these little things can turn into big things down the road and um, be not good. Yeah, so. it's not like we're constantly just sitting around thinking about negative things that can happen. It goes back to what I talked about no, yeah. earlier. I'm, I'm a questioner. Well, you could think about a positive. Where is this yeah, going? Like exactly. The way you're investing in your farm, it could go yeah. anywhere. Or your children. Right. Uh, yeah. Are we going to get, because you guys have gotten goats more recently, so you could be saying, you could look at that macro, Lee, and say, well, where's this going to take us if we yeah. get goats? Exactly right. Mm-hmm. Or, or similar, you, you uh, see, it you could see take you in a positive the, direction. How the shutdowns have affected the, the our food system and, and how the food 
was <laughs> hasn't been <laughs> transported to places at times and there's been food shortage. So you're like, all right, I need to step it up on my homestead mm. to produce more so that way I can take care of my family. Yeah, I want to make sure the that trajectory. we can put food on the And then they right. see the positive of what we've already done to be like, look, you know, we do have chicken and ducks the in the freezer. The trajectory that you yeah. had yeah. your foresight years ago. Yeah, Because yeah. early on, even looking at the whole lockdown thing, uh, I was noticing uh, just the trajectory once again. I was like, this is totally unsustainable. People, we cannot uh, go on people not working and, and, yeah. and producing. Yeah, you're right. We have to produce. Even individually and collectively, we have to be producers or it, 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 things just crumble and we won't be here anymore. You can't always be a consumer. No, we've we've been sold this consumer mindset in our consumer mm. society that it's just consume, get, get, get. But once you're like living on the homestead, you have to understand you to provide. You have to produce. Yeah. You just don't kick back on the yeah. homestead and, and just say, okay, I'm gonna harvest. You gotta sow. <laughs> you gotta take care. You gotta water. Like, like I like saying. how he's pulling in for the harvest and he's pushing out for the sow and water. That's good. He's a good hand talker. He is. I'm glad this is a video Very podcast. <laughs> but, but like we all we, we say, like God's way is give. It's a way of give. It's a way of serve. It's doing. It's not just consuming and taking well i mean when the lockdowns happened you know like i'm sure your life didn't change all that much no no not really. as did ours did not change that much either you know even like, when i went out it didn't change either we were still i mean we were uh, still we well, were still you gotten ev- some looks every day we were had something to do you know like all of a sudden people found themselves bored yeah yeah because what uh, they were doing was not happening anymore i mean sure like some of the stuff that we were going to do was canceled, yeah. you know, like an event, yeah. a large event mm-hmm. or there what have you. There were plenty of events. But, like, our day-to-day was largely unaffected. Ours, too. Yeah. So, let's... Which I was thankful for. hmm You said your kids would say, oh, that's not true, because it's something y'all said. How old's your oldest? Eleven. What did you do to make that happen? You teach them that your kids trust you. Mm. I, I they believe what you're and saying. Take it as truth. Another thing that I feel, and this comes from the Bible as well, is that we're to diligently teach our children. Yeah. And I, I take that goal very. We take that goal very seriously. So we're constantly uh, talking with them, having conversations with them, asking them questions, and and trying to to teach them and and helping them to form, be able to form critical. skills thinking skills, yes. mm. uh, but also f- providing them with a, a, a value system to to continue on for the rest of their life. Yeah. What was the last time you had one of these talks with them? Well, we, It doesn't even have to be the last one. Give us an example. Well, I, I would, as far as heavy conversation, well, th- throughout the day, we're I was going to say, it doesn't even have honestly, to be heavy. It does not have to be heavy. Yeah. Or are you saying you're having heavy conversations? At and times, that's important. At times, but mm. just kind of give you somewhat of an idea of, of how our day goes. Uh, we get some of our chores done in the morning, and then we have a family meeting every morning, which our lifestyle is conducive mm. for that with homesteading and the way that we've uh, structured uh, our family business. We have a family meeting. We kind of go over things for the day, give opportunities to talk. And then we, we we break, and then we go and do different tasks together. But we're talking as we're doing those tasks. Things pop up yeah. as you're living life together. And then at the end of the day, we have Thank family you. meals together, which I think is very important. Even if you don't have a family business it, you need, and you have a family, you need to make sure you sit down, have dinner together, no TV on, and just talk with each other. Um, so we'll eat our meal. We'll talk as we're going. But one of the things I try to do after mm-hmm. the meal is I'll ask questions. I have a book, and uh, I try to yes, just ask questions. Because one of the things that I learned, I learned this from a pastor years ago, is he started doing that. He was a really good at asking people questions. And it almost made you kind of feel uncomfortable, almost like right now. I'm going to need this book. <laughs> but to me, when he would ask those questions... It communicated to me that he cared about what I had to say and what was going on in my life and in me. And I was like, I want to learn to do that. I want to ask questions. Uh, okay, so what what question do you use on other people now from that book? Um, oh, the, the book is full of questions. It, and it has silly questions and it has more serious. some more a little right, more serious questions. Like if you could have um if you could change, ah, what was it? Make one change in the world? What would it be? Something like that. Or if yeah. you had one okay, million dollars, what would you do with it? All right, Lacey, if you could have a million dollars, what would you do? A million dollars. <laughs> wow. 
I would have a down payment. What was the other one? <laughs> you were going to answer the other one. It was, it was uh, like if you could change one thing about the world or okay. something. I don't know. So whoever thinks of the answer something. first, you got the million dollar question, Lacey. And, and I got the probably our own thing. property. Buy. You would buy. you would buy out your own property. Well, I would I would buy a property for us that okay. was ours. Okay. That, Alone. Yeah. You weren't sharing. So you don't that. necessarily feel rooted there where you are. I feel rooted. My parents are close, and I want to always have that relationship until, you know, mm -hmm. it's not there anymore. But I, 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 we, because people have asked us if we would move before, and I said if it, if it wasn't for my parents, then yeah. So with a million dollars, you could take your parents with you. Yeah, I've asked them if they would move would before. Would Where would you go? Probably, would you move just locally to just to a property that was like yours? Or would no, you, you could go like anywhere. Or? You got a million bucks. I mean, maybe I there's some places, I guess. I haven't found a place that I would say that I definitely... I've always lived in North Carolina, and, and I've well, I've been to different that's places. That's because you live in the place that is the best. In well, I love the North I mean, Carolina mountains. The mountains. Yeah, you aren't it's in the mountains. It's been my favorite. So just move, move a couple of it's hours uh, yeah. west, so, and you're good. Yeah. But that would probably be... I would buy a piece of property that we loved. Yeah, maybe we could be neighbors with them or something. Yeah. 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 Like what that. did y'all's kids... How many kids acres do you want? Set? I mean, I don't know. I've Sorry. always said I don't no, I don't want neighbors. I love you woods want. and neighbors. Yeah. I don't mind people being close, but I don't want people don't looking want in people my house. See you. Maybe yeah. 50? No, I get it. Yeah. So, that, yeah. so you just YouTube that and now <laughs> tens of thousands of people are looking into your I'm house. Sure. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Uh, but at I know least what they're you not mean. I know what you mean. There. You have full control of that. You have control of that. What did the kids say they would do with a million dollars? Oh, they would come up with Oh, some, I'm sure. All kinds of stuff. I know what Sailor <laughs> would buy right off the bat. You could probably answer that. A too. horse. Yeah, Sailor would have, some, would have at least horse. one horse, if not more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she would have horses and a horse. What barn. do you do if they don't want to participate in the farm? They don't want to answer the question. Oh, oh, if they don't want to answer the question. That happens. That really does happen. Yeah. I, but I've noticed that as we've done it more, that becomes less. Mm, yeah, they want to participate. Um, are they giving you Sunday school answers? No, no. This is random stuff. Like um, I'm trying to think of something random that's come they'll, up. They'll 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 not give you what I mean by Sunday school answers. They're not. Are they saying the answer they think you want to hear? No, I, I, don't, I don't think, think so. so. And actually, there's been nights where I'm, I, I've kind of gotten lazy, and I'm like, I'm not going to do the questions. And then one of my child. <laughs> Yeah, our children like, will go get the book. The I book? like this. I like this. Uh, no, well, they like no to less. talk about themselves. Everybody yeah. does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we all do. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think kids do want us. Ultimately, can, deep down inside of kids, they want their parents to take an interest in them. Yeah. No. yeah. Yes. I mean, I, ultimately, I said that in my book. That's one thing you can do to to be have quality time with your kids while doing chores is ask them questions. You're sitting there milking. Well, one, you can sit there in silence. Mm -hmm. And you're just enjoying each other's presence. You have energy that's talking to each other. Oh. You could say, what would you do with a million dollars? Yeah. And she'd go on and on about a I horse. I really want to get this book. I'm excited yeah. about it. No, yeah. What's your answer to your big one? My answer to this and uh, it, um, would probably be that we would all be unified in walking in God's way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that was the what, one him. thing you could change in the world? Yeah, that would be okay. what I would change. Yep. Okay. I, I feel like God's way works, his blessings behind it and yeah. Who is it that said be the change? I want to say Obama. Did he say that? So how are you gonna be the change? Is it Gandhi? It could be. Be the change that you want to see, see in the world. world. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I can't remember. That's one of the goals that I have on the YouTube channel. I, I don't try to preach and I hope that I'm not coming across as preaching right now in any way, but to share. And just live our life and share through the example that we have and what we do. Yeah. And I hope that that comes through. Yeah, I don't think you're preaching at all. <laughs> I don't think you're preaching okay. at all. No. We're asking you questions. It's so nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, it's so nice. I will say this we're frying up the bacon over there. Yesterday. I know. <laughs> and I'm teasing him left and right. <laughs> it's y'all's house. And eating the what bacon right from Rebecca was like, "Is it rude if we I know, make I bacon?" Like, I don't know because Justin's and, like, and they can't have it. bacon." I said, "I, I like, don't think so. It would be rude if you cook the eggs in the, ba in the, in the bacon in the grease. bacon grease, yeah. and then you can eat the eggs." But yeah. yeah, no, I mean, you guys were like, "We don't care if you eat." It bacon. might be rude like, if oh. I. I think I knew you enough. It would probably be rude if I knew you struggled with it. Yeah. Oh. If you were actually tempted yeah. to have bacon, and you were like, "Because yeah. I, really I think want that. I think you can be tempted." 
I don't know how much control you have over that. I think you can be tempted and not indulge. Yeah. 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 And I think there's something to be said about that. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody who uh, abstains from tell, bacon tell. but really wants it. Yeah. Yeah. And if they're doing that for to follow God's law as an expression of their love for him, then that that seems very loving. I can assure you there was no struggle there. Yeah. So I appreciate your talk. So then we were not real. <laughs> we were not real. Because yeah. you quit when you were you were nine or ten ish. Somewhere around there, yeah. yeah. And you you had said we're kind of circling back. You said you kinda of explored all different kinds of religions. Well, this was a Muslim re, uh, reasoning back then, wasn't it? Back with my dad, he just had a conversation with a guy who was Muslim that he worked with, and okay. Um, but uh, ultimately, it was just just for me. Once I started proving things for myself, it was like, okay, it's not following something that my dad did or my parents mm-hmm. did. Yeah, this is what I'm doing with my relationship with God, and that's what I need to do. And, you, and everything in you, life, that's what I feel. I'm, I'm telling to, to the viewers because they don't see us off off this. Mm-hmm. We, we've been hanging out for a day now already and have hung out, I don't know, countless times. Right. And I don't, I don't feel any judgment coming from y'all. Uh, okay. I can so. eat the bacon right in front of you. <laughs> yeah, and you're not. And I know you're not tempted. Not. I wouldn't do it if I felt like you were tempted. I, appreciate I mean, that. I quit eating gluten because yeah. Rebecca's not supposed to eat gluten. Yeah. I didn't want to tempt her that way, so I wouldn't do that. Yeah, but that's kind of rare. So, so how in the world do you not judge us for eating pork? Well, that's your life. Yeah, like who are we to come and like push what we feel like God has led us to do? Push it on you or anybody? Mm. Like that? We're not. All right. I don't want to push. Because what? Where? What would that do? What good would that do anyway? Mm. Would it show you the love of God? Mm. Me pushing that on you, it yeah. wouldn't show God's love That's there. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, because you would, he wants everybody to wa- walk in unity unity under God's will. So you judging us ain't going to accomplish that goal. No, it would have made matters worse. If probably. you would like, you would foresee that, it, you know, if we abstain from pork, you know, uh, maybe we would have some joy or something there. You would obviously think that others could benefit from doing this. Yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, but your approach is not preachy. Yeah, uh, I didn't feel bad. It's eating not three judgmental. Of bacon at all. And if you were coming in here, if, basically, if we, if we were feeling judged, we just probably wouldn't have you back. Yeah. I mean, nobody, <laughs> nobody wants to feel judged, yeah, exactly and we right. definitely Especially ain't. Especially at your own house, we definitely ain't yep. quitting the bacon. Then, yeah, yeah, it's your house. minute you leave, we'd be piling, we'd be. Craving, you know, yep. piling it up. Yep. But somebody That's kind funny. comes in, you you want, and I hope people get out of this. I hope these podcasts opens, open people's minds and, and, and they consider other views mm-hmm. in pol- kindness, yeah. in politeness. Non-judgmental ways. We've had Catholics on here so far. We've had pagans on here so far. Uh, and then you guys, are y'all Christian? What is it? I would say is it yeah. is part it, of the Church of God Christianity. That's what it is. That's the denomination. Church of God. Church yeah. Of God, yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I need your question book right now. <laughs> 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 okay. Do you remember the name of that book? It's three hundred sixty-five. Um, marriage three sixty-five is the the uh, the overall the, the husband and wife that run the organization. Yeah. And you can find the book on there. It's one for okay. families, 365 questions, questions for, for families, families, something like that. Okay. It's a red book. Okay. Um, the one for husbands and wives is really good, too. Yeah. Mm. And and I'm promoting their stuff, and even I have no affiliation with yeah. them at all, but they have a lot of good resources. Yeah. yeah. So you guys told early on that part of what got you into this journey, the spiritual journey, was questioning everything. What What was the first thing you questioned that, wasn't normal or wasn't the norm. It doesn't have to be the spiritual. It could be food choices or what. What was? Oh man, there's oh, usually a sp- there's that. usually a starting point. You question one thing and there then you're off. Cr- you're off to you're you're wearing dominoes. a full hat, ten full hat before you know it. So I went to massage school. That's what I did for ten years. Really? So I was a massage therapist for ten years, and you've been holding out on us. I, I'm judging you right now. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so. I was 20 when I started massage school. So, and how old were you when you guys met? I was 21 and she was 19. Yeah. Why are you she was laughing? 20 because I'm older than you. You're a cougar. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's an Ontario on a cooler. Oh, that's hilarious. That's okay. great. Hold on a second. I have another question. You're going there. Y'all are going there today. <laughs> Woo! Stop it. How long have you guys been married? It'll be 16 years in June. Okay, and then how how old were you when you guys got married? How long did you date, I guess? We I dated say. four and a half years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you guys are like 25 ish. Yes. Yep. When you got married. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now go on with your story. You're Sarah. the one who asked that controversial <laughs> question. Which one was? Was how old? How old were you when you got married? Oh, oh, okay. We didn't know. It was, okay. We didn't know. It was, I didn't Sensitive. know it was controversial. <laughs> no. yeah. Not at all. So, like, when I went to massage school and you start learning all about natural healing and things like this. So that's kind of where my deep dive started. Okay. And so, you know. You don't need surgery to fix carpal tunnel. You don't need all these uh, other things. That and mine started out in the medical like area, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't I don't want pharmaceuticals. I don't want all this. So that's just been like a twenty year thing for me, is yeah. that uh, that and then you start learning more about food mm -hmm. and him we both like I used to work out a lot and then when I met him, he's a personal trainer, bodybuilder. You know, all this, we're really into our food and, you know, what you eat and then going into organic stuff and then learning about, you know, um, chemicals. And that was another one in massage school, like chemicals and staying away from all those things. So that's where, like, I started questioning a lot of stuff right then about, okay. like, what we've been told about health and wellness and what we actually mm. need to do. Yeah. So. What, what can you do to carpal tunnel besides surgery? Oh, you can. There's massage you can do, and really, yeah, yeah. So I just call up a massage lady and be like, "Well, it ain't okay. It's not gonna tunnel. feel good. It's not a feel good, fluffy, fluff and That's buff totally massage. Fine. I'll send them in there. But yeah, so <laughs> no there's problems. and there's stretches you can do. Do it on mic. I can't right here, but I would have to okay. be like he'd have to be in front of me. Okay. But essentially, you strip all these muscles up through here. Because the fascia, yeah, has come tight on it. Yeah, and right here, is. the nerve goes right under mm -hmm. this right here. And what they do in surgery is they'll just remove this section of that like Bone. ligament that goes oh. through there. And That's bad. but a lot of people will actually it'll grow back even more scar tissue and oh. then you'll revert back to having it too. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's not a fun massage to get, <laughs> but um, there's also stretches. There's stretches you can do. To the, chiro the chiropractor has helped him with yeah. it. She, yeah. she's done some work on his like neck. Cause like they're, they're thinking cause Justin after the reactive arthritis has yeah. been having some numbness and tingling and they and think that can be cervical tunnel. vertebrae. Yeah. So, the chiropractor was saying it could be in your neck, mm -hmm. shoulder, or wrist. Mm -hmm. It's not, and it's usually or elbow too, and it, it's usually a combination of all of those. Yeah, we need to find those essential oils and start putting them on where they said to. Yeah, too. I mean, he's seen an acupuncturist as well, and she's helping a ton. Yeah, I'll work on you later. She and did me on it. lymph massage, and my neck, man, that hurt something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk about not fun. <laughs> She's like, it's not going to feel good. I was like, yeah, I do it. <laughs> Let's get it over with. That's what I used to tell my clients. I'm like, this ain't going to feel good. So y'all have, y'all have, y'all have your own online platforms on YouTube, Instagram. Am I missing anybody? Yeah, we're a little on Facebook. Um, just started your TikTok. Yeah, you just helped me start TikTok. <laughs> I started. Put it on the books. Put it on the record. Oh, yeah. I helped him with his very first TikTok. Yeah, sure so is. when you're TikTok famous, don't forget the little guy. Okay, okay. don't forget the little guy. <laughs> we got it on. You. We got it on. Track. Well, you're the whole reason that we're on YouTube too. So you oh, know. good. Big part of that. Yeah. There you go. So well, you we weren't much. even on YouTube keep, when we met you guys. Keeping no. a trend. Yeah. Okay. So when as you guys create online content, um, you talk about this stuff that we just talked about. On your Instagram, you talk about going to town. Nothing's changed for you. You're going to town. Have y'all always been that open on your platforms, politically and with your faith? Uh, not not at first. Um, and part of that's kind of growing as a presenter or whatever you call it on and being more comfortable with mm. with that um, on whatever platform we're on. Uh, gradually have been more open with the, some of the faith things on YouTube and mm. trying to share those things. 
because uh, it's really important. It's really important who we are, and uh, we don't want to deny our faith either and hide it. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Once again, back to being a light, and you don't hide the light. When you want it to shine somewhere, you want to put it in open, like where we can see it. Yeah. Were you nervous doing that, bringing it out to uh, the light? Yes and no. I, I, I was wanted to be careful with it. I'm always trying not to speak in haste, even right here. I'm trying to yeah. be careful with yeah. how I say it and not offend people in, intentionally. Um, but um, I've, I've spoken in the, the public speaking and I have spoken at church before, and I wouldn't say I was completely uncomfortable with it. Mm. But uh, it, it, I know that it does open us up to get for people to uh, say things, but it's part of the part of the territory. I hope people are going to say something no matter what you yeah, say. They are. People oh, don't say that's... anything, do they, Lacey? <laughs> people say things about everything. Of they do. <laughs> All kinds of stuff. One recent one was um, somebody was asking... Of, like we don't touch all the time in our videos and they was like well, you just never show any affection to anybody and i'm just like so the last video he slapped me in the butt and we left it in there we're like come on there you go like, well then you're gonna have somebody well, complain we about have that kids we had to do some kind yeah, of right, action, right? right i know right <laughs> the thing is about at it at least that's, three times that's right the thing that's so interesting about it youtube or sharing your life yeah. on any platform is that people think that because you share some of your life that you should share all of your life. Yes. Yes. And that's just not the way life is. No. no. <laughs> so it's 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 a it's a hard balance because you know like well when we first started we did used to share a lot more. Mm-hmm. You know, we've really pulled back and I feel like I want to have more of a personal boundary, you know, like I don't want to share a lot. Well, you don't sometimes um, air you know. your dirty laundry to your whole town. No. So, I mean, everybody has these walls, and I think it's healthy to have them. And yeah. Like, somebody said, you know, your kids are so well-behaved. Well, yeah, but they're also kids. Yeah. And I'm not going to show my kid having a meltdown on one of our videos, because that's them at their worst. Yeah. yeah. Would I want anyone showing me at my worst? Right. And nobody like, it's sh- tunes in to see that. That'd be embarrassing right. to them as yeah. well. Yeah. It would be eventually in shaming. Yeah. There's exactly. so many things. Like, yeah, so I'm I mean, not going to do that. Yeah, our kids are still just kids. Yeah. All of our kids. Oh yeah, right. like they're good kids. Yeah, but they're still kids. Exactly. Yeah. Even so. adults, we have our down time. Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't want my worst they, put out there. Justin they, may they, not, but they, I, I do. <laughs> they call me irritable Justin. Yes. <laughs> irritable Justin. Irritable comes Sometimes they just seven, look at me and seven say that I look like I'm mad. Seven. I've run out of patience. See, it, seven p.m. Yep. is seven. Justin's moment where he's just like. Is it time for bed? Yeah, I understand that. Uh-huh. You know, so yeah, it's because you've been patient all day. Do your kids ever do this? You're like in deep thought, or maybe your wife too, and they think that you're mad, and I'm just thinking deep. I think they know me now. I'm always oh. mad. Like a, <laughs> yeah, we've people, heard a lot of reports. I seem very intimidating. Just in so many people would say your husband's so intimidating, and I'm like, really? <laughs> and when you meet me. But he's just quiet, and yeah. that's intimidating. Yeah. Whereas, it's, like me, I like it's hard for people because I'm God, God. more quiet. They're shocked when they come through our line at the meetups, and I'm the I'm the quiet one. Mm-hmm. Uh, how you doing? Okay, fine. How, they'll say, "Hey, how, how you feeling for the product?" I'm I'm feeling better. Mm. Well, Rebecca has a whole spiel on yeah. it. Yeah, I would, I would say and they're shocked because she's introverted on the camera in the shows, right? Well, it's just more because you don't put the camera on me. Yeah. You're hogging it. <laughs> you, you'll talk you a lot, hogging. though. Me... But you're not, I, don't, I don't take you as like a chattery person. I feel like I'm yeah, the same way. Yeah. Like you get me and going, maybe, I'll start talking. Maybe it seems like <laughs> the vlog, I'm chattery. <laughs> because that's really what it is. I mean, it's just a roadshow. I've yeah. got to say something. Yeah. So I just want to add to what Lacey was saying about as we were questioning things, um, along with questioning the religious stuff. As I was growing up and I started getting more interested in health, I wanted to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sylvester Stallone. (laughs) I really just started getting into working out. And then along with working out, I was like, "Uh, I need to start eating better. Mm. And uh, later in my my teens, I I started really shifting my diet. And one of the things that I noticed as I started changing my diet, because I was on a really sad American diet, 
A lot of sugar. I would eat really frosted Even, flakes with sugar added on to it. And this is when you were bodybuilding. No, this uh, is before. Okay, this, this is before. Oh, okay. Like okay. Let's growing go down the list. Yeah. Frosted flakes. Uh, frosted flakes. Two to four pop tarts every day. Really? Uh, like Kool Aid. Uh, Lunchables. Uh, you name it. Just sugar. Uh, Coke. Seven ups. Right. Whatever it was. Drinking all that junk. Like, Hawaiian Punch. Sunny yeah. D. All that junk. That sugar. And I noticed as I started eating differently, um, I was able to breathe out of both nostrils. <laughs> I went my whole life only mostly breathing out of one nostril. And I remember one as was it started congested. clearing up, yes. one, and as it started clearing up, as I started eating better, I was like, "Lacey, is it normal to only breathe out of one nostril most of the time?" And she's like, "No, that's not <laughs> normal at all." Beating like this too. <laughs> Yeah, well, growing up, I mean, I grew up with yeah, pretty much the Sad you know there. Doritos and chips and all. But I grew up beside my grandparents, and I always grew up eating like canned vegetables. We we canned and did all that, and like they grew it and then yeah, canned it. yeah. Okay. So I think I had it was still bad food, but we I think it balanced out with and and that's part of like our homesteading stuff. I always. Wanted to have a garden and all because I, I I knew how good it tasted growing it yourself mm -hmm. and so much cheaper and, and all this. So that was kind of part of it, too. I never grew up growing anything. I was definitely a, <laughs> a um, city suburban kid. city kid. And, uh, no contact with anything farm related. No growing vegetables, no, no cows, no chickens, no any of that. I did have somewhat of knowledge that, yes, the grocery store did get this food from the farm some way, somehow. It magically appeared. But I, I didn't really know. But as mm -hmm. I started going into the uh, the health journey of, of eating better, and then I started continuing to work out, and then I got into competitive bodybuilding and was bodybuilding for a number of years, and I was working as a personal trainer and got to the point where I was also a nutritional coach where I actually started helping other people with their diets and seeing results with helping others. That it was like I got to the point where I just wanted to keep going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, and I was like, you know what? If I want to start really eating better, I need to start eating organic food. Start doing that. And you know what? If I want to eat even better than that, I need to actually know the story behind the food and where it comes from, and actually start growing some myself. <laughs> now wait a minute. You were starting to help people with their diets. Had you already switched over? You're still eating pop tarts at this time? No, this was probably my late teenage years is when I really started cutting that stuff out and really just started eating cleaner and cleaner each each year as I started learning more and more and uh, was taking certifications in personal training as well as certifications in nutritional coaching and I was just really studying and studying it and um, also along those lines as I was starting to work with people getting people in the shape people would lose a bunch of weight work on their diets and fitness stuff uh, Somewhere along that time, and as I was there, starting to think, hey, I want to start growing some of my own food now to actually know the story behind it. I also came across, we watched together, the movie Food, Inc., and that was really, mm. that was really an impactful movie in our life. Uh, that was where we really saw even more in depth the, the, the realities of our food system and how food is brought to the table. But it also gave us our first introduction to Joel Salatin. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, because wow. he was in that. I that remember. yeah, I want to farm like that guy. It's beautiful. Are you farming at this time? No, oh, but I was starting to grow said, food in the city, I and I was farm like, like, "This guy, yeah. I, I love what he's doing. That's how it should be done." And um, years went by, and I was like, "Man, do we need to meet that guy?" And then finally, here recently, yeah. we've been able to meet him. But that movie had a, a real uh, powerful impact on our lives. I yeah. feel like every time we talk to somebody, they've watched a documentary. Hmm. And it's yeah. made a huge impact. We were documentary wow. junkies. I mean, I think yeah. that's what we were too. I mean, we watched a lot of documentaries. Yeah. So we watched Food Inc. We actually went to the movie theater and, and got to see it in the movie theater. Where'd y'all see it? Uh, I think I rented it somehow. What's rented that? it. Remember Netflix? that? Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know. Yes, it was. Uh, I know. We'll send out the DVDs. Yeah. That's okay, what I mean. oh, it. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll tell our kids about like Blockbuster, and we're like, oh, I remember? Like yeah. we used to like it used be to kind, be a thing. Be kind. Yeah. And like they have would, no idea. Yeah, they're like, and they're, the building is still there. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be like, that's where we used to go rent movies, and the kids are like. That's right our next as we drive by, like, yeah. and I'll be like, and we used to drive it around the side, and there was a return. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't have to go. That's back our. Uh, we walked uphill both ways in yeah. the snow. <laughs> exactly. We used exactly. to watch our movies. We used to drive thirty minutes in town, and then we had to and, rewind them and get it and late fees and pay four dollars for it, <laughs> and then 
You had to get it back the next day or you'd have yeah. another That's $4. Right. I know. One time we forgot and you had that to we rewind had a movie it. and the late fee was like 20, 30 bucks. <laughs> you were like, <laughs> like, we could have bought this movie several times. I know, I know, right? <laughs> but um, what, where was I going with that? Oh, so we saw Food Inc., but we also saw Fresh, another yes, documentary at yep. the same time. And yep. Fresh was so refreshing. Yes. And Food Inc. was so depressing. Yeah. I remember just being like such a contrast to those two movies and how Fresh was like, Food Inc. after. Yes. Like like how to be the change yeah, yeah. that you yeah. want to see in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Food Inc. was like, I remember the last, I think it was the last scene where it's a farmer and he's like literally saying like, our us the farmers will grow what you the consumers want to buy. We're smart people. We know what to grow. So you vote with your dollar. And yeah. I just remember being like, yeah. that's so sad. Like he was sad yeah. Yeah. because sure. he doesn't want to necessarily yeah. grow what he's growing but he grows it because that's what pays his bills yeah 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 and so i just remember being like that is so depressing but then we saw fresh and it was like a breath of fresh air and we were it like was. oh yeah there's a different way of growing things so yeah but we were we were i know now now there's still you know it's still like so many documentaries out yeah. there and people does it like, make you want to make a documentary i have um <laughs> to, to, com even to accomplish your to goal if your goal is everyone following God's plan? And you just, does it unity. make you want to make it? Does it make you want to make a movie? I always kind of have wanted to to uh, make a movie or TV series at at some point. Um, back when I was been interested in filmmaking, I have. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually went to school briefly uh, before I got into the fitness and working in that industry for um, computer animation. I was really into Star Wars and being in Arnold Schwarzenegger, like movies. So I was like, I'd like to be a director or something one day and do some stuff like that. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would. I think that would be neat. That What's be stopping neat. you? Good question. Good question. Time right now. Time, resources. Yeah. So you saw that on Netflix. We saw it in the movie theater. Mm -hmm. Uh, there was Biggest Little Farm. That's kind of the most recent, Biggest Little Little yeah. Farm. recent yeah. one that will change people's minds. I like that movie, uh, but one of the things that I yeah. don't like about it's that little... movie is it makes it seem like when it, you're it starting so a farm, easy. it's so easy. You just got money coming in. You're just like, okay, we got this money. What do we do? Well, with they it? had investors. Mm. Yes. That is, I mean, that's like, not the reality of everybody yeah. starting Knowing, a farm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because I remember looking at the property and I was like, wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. Must that be cost nice. some dollar bills. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, like they they that that's a way to start it, a it farm. Is. Yes, it is. getting investors yeah. and doing that. They're actually making a biggest little farm too. Okay, okay. and I think they're even going to have like a series yeah. as well. I feel like I saw something about that. I what mean, it, it's interesting. Like I, you know, part of that movie too though is like they had already been through it. Like so, they filmed for however many yeah. years, yep. and then they made that film. Yeah. And so, like, you didn't see, like, so they showed problems, but they quickly had an answer for yeah. them and were able to execute that answer. And so it was, I don't want to say unrealistic, because it was realistic. It's what happened yeah. for them. Mm -hmm. But it, it was such a, it was a time period. Mm -hmm. So I think that's hard because people, like, think, like, oh, I'm going to farm or I'm in yep. a homestead. Yep. And then when it doesn't all become like you know however long that movie is and it's not all wrapped up in mm -hmm. in this pretty little bow with music playing and all the things <laughs> i think it can be a little bit discouraging yeah Th that was my biggest thing with that i remember watching that and i i guess because our journey was so different for our farm mm -hmm. and yep. a lot of bumps theirs a lot. theirs was mad it was magical it seemed magical yes and then i mean it i was remember magical but there were hard times but yeah. see the thing it wasn't in real time yes whereas like when you're living your life it's in real time like, and, and i hurts. remember standing out there mike having a mm. metal grate over our beds shoveling this hard red clay over it and then taking his hands and running it through this metal grate so we would have soil to grow in because we couldn't afford compost Wow. Because we couldn't yeah. afford we couldn't afford anything. So I was trying to do my best like to we were create loose soil. Broke. Wow. Doing it all from scratch. Yeah. And I guess that's where that in me and I know a lot of people out there that are trying to do that mm -hmm. that don't have the resources and 
like you said, it makes it look magical. And growing stuff is magical. And romantic. Yes. And we've talked about that, too, how, you know, homesteading life and farm life is over-romanticized. And, you know, oh, I'm going to go mm. grow my own food and I'm going to do this mm. and it's going to be wonderful. And then everything starts dying all at once. Yeah. And then you're like, or what have I done? <laughs> the romantic, too, like, it doesn't show. I mean, like, even with our vlog, I'm, I am never want to portray it as this romantic thing yeah. because it's not. Yeah. But, like, nobody, nobody's going to watch a video of us shoveling for five hours. Exactly. Yeah. So you show yeah. a short segment of yeah. that. And you can say five hours later, wow, I'm really tired. But yeah. until you've <laughs> shoveled for five hours, you're yeah. never going to feel feel that exactly mm -hmm. you have to balance that so you have to yeah buckets need to be washed too mm -hmm. but you can only show so much mm -hmm. of a bucket so yeah as a as a creator you have to show just enough to keep everybody interested but you still have to get the work done yep. mm -hmm. so you have to leave some time to get something done exactly right so it's, it's a on balance. continuous projects yeah. like if we were to put up a fence yeah. or build something that was going to consume most of our time Come along. It's just going to be boring. I mean, I've done that before. We yeah. built those nest boxes in the greenhouses. Our content suffered that week because that's all we're doing that week is yeah. building these nest boxes. And that's that's the hard part of content creation and, and farming or homesteading is that it, there's a lot of boring times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's people so don't necessarily want to see that. Well, and yeah. yeah. And sometimes it gets but I, of, Yeah, I guess like my whole thing with, with that was just... I don't know. You can't understand what goes into it. And especially mm -hmm. having investors is great. But what if you don't ever have any investors? Like, what do you do? Mm -hmm. And like, I hope that comes through in some of the stuff that we do and show how yeah. to do stuff is like, you can do it. It's going to be really hard, but you yeah. can do it. That's actually well, what we're planning to talk about at Homesteaders of America in Tennessee, yeah. uh, how to start mm -hmm. a farm, homestead with no money. I'm glad we're saying this because... Let's talk about the homesteaders or the investors, though. Well, I don't know the they? story. I, wait, I don't know the story. I don't know if they were just planted there. But somebody could take a different mentality and say, well, they found investors. Yeah, no, I, I think can that's too. great. I applaud them. I don't no, say anything that, negative about them at all. There's nothing wrong it's, with investors. But I just, I think that there's a lot of people that want a homestead and all. They don't even know how it would go about getting investors. I don't. Or they don't even maybe, want. Maybe you do. They don't want investors because <laughs> no. they don't want anybody else involved. Yeah, in that Beckham, stuff. that's part of it. I don't know yeah. how to do it, but I didn't know how to set up a YouTube channel. Well, I didn't know true. how to. And you I don't have learn. any filmmaking experience. Yeah. And it's. Not, I don't know how to do a podcast. I don't want to make an excuse. I figured it out. Yeah. But I think a lot of people out there. They don't even want to do that. And some people just think it's going to be easy. But the thing about yeah, the investors, you do have to too, meet though, them where they're at. Yeah. Well, the investors, though, like what Lacey was saying, like, I don't want an investor because I don't want anyone telling me what I should and yeah. shouldn't be doing. And losing yeah. control over what you have that's yeah. yours. Yeah. That you've worked really hard yeah. to yeah. to make happen. So, I mean, I get like there's a place for that yeah. because they are a market farm. No, I, they are going like I yep. know they yeah. go to because I follow their farm on Instagram yeah. and like they're going to farm farmers markets and like they are meeting a need in their community yeah, yeah. that's so part like, of their there's struggle definitely a, a a place for that yeah. i'm not saying that there isn't they probably don't just love to share it all you know yeah that's yeah, probably a yeah. struggle for them that's yeah. one of the things i learned about as we were doing youtube and i think this is probably something that a lot of people fall into with social media in general is you just want to show the good things yeah but people Is that learn you? through the hard things, like watching you on YouTube and the struggles you have. That mm. that helps us out. It helps us to see the struggle and you guys overcome it, to press through it. It's it's, it's very beneficial to see those things. So I, I, over the years, I've tried to share some of more of those things on our channel, and people have said they appreciated that that we're yeah. not perfect. Well, and you're in it together. Yeah, like that's mm -hmm. where you need people that someone that's done it and been there like you need to know that you're not the only one and back to right. the movies and making movies yeah. when, you, when you're watching a movie uh the the hero you there's always a struggle that's what yeah. makes it interesting mm -hmm. to, that for that hero to go through that struggle and then overcome the struggle it makes a great story yeah what sorry go ahead. Go ahead. no you go ahead i have my question written down so go ahead oh, right, so you don't right. forget it okay um I, this question should be in that book, the, these book of questions. If you were to make a movie, what would your movie be about? 
I, I, I've been thinking about that a little bit more since you were asking the question a little bit ago. Um, I, I'm almost thinking it should be something like along the lines, it, this doesn't have to be the title, but be the change that you want to see. Mm. Okay. And then showcase somehow people making those that impact. Here we go. Okay, so what does a movie look like to you? What, what's a movie? What's the definition of a movie? Oh, that depends. Am I making a documentary? I mean, what kind of movie? Yeah, I'm asking. It. This is coming from the guy who who asked you what was most interesting this morning, and then all of a sudden you had your first TikTok today. So what? Things are progressing quickly. And, and we talked yesterday about you creating some original content for Abundance Plus, so you might see where I'm going with this. Uh, so be the change, and you're. Well, I don't know. I'm asking you. Do you want to make a? You want to make a? a hey, you want to make a, a fiction? Documentary? You want to make one where they're acting? Hmm. I'd say uh, maybe I would take a little bit of this back. I would say I would do maybe, <laughs> maybe a series. Back. He's backing up now. I would, I would do a so series. Sure about that first TikTok. <laughs> that's one thing. TikTok's I would do a TV series on okay, that. Right. Okay, like a docu-series. Okay. Okay. Not docu Be so the change. It would be, it would okay. be like uh, uh, not fiction. What's I'm writing this down. What do you Non-fiction? Say Non-fiction. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. So what's the, bad, what's the premise? Bad. What's the idea? Be, just be the change. Who, who's going to watch this? What's the problem they're gonna you're gonna solve with this show? Um, hopefully it inspires people to 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 do good. Um, mm, to make the change. Whether they are into homesteading or whatever is being shown on there, and we we try to do some of this in our channel as well. But talk about things, principles that can be applied in whatever area of okay. work or whatever you have in life. That. Um, and they have little themes each each episode or whatever. Okay. How many episodes? Themes each episode. I hope it keep going. To be honest with you. So <laughs> would it be about you every time? Is it about you? No, is it I your journey? About is it me. teaching? I'd like to go. I like to showcase other people. So you're going to showcase other people's being the change. Sure. That they want to see. Yep. Okay. People so are doing be, great things. Would it be spiritual too? Would it or yep. would it be okay? It would be. It yep. would have a spiritual element of yes. the people being the what change. What if they what see. if it was. A Muslim? Would you feature a Muslim? He's doing something great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's you can learn from spiritually, anybody. Spiritually, he yeah. is being the change he wants to see. Yeah. Interesting. Or she. I met a Muslim at the uh, Homesteaders of America um, business or spring one of those. It was business and uh, they have a very interesting story. Like the dad has been injured, mm -hmm. and they're holding this farm together. Wow. Uh, and their their foundational faith is Islam. Uh, oftentimes we'll get sometimes criticism about who we don't showcase on our channel. Mm. It's not about the color of their skin, yeah, or, or gender, or whatever. It's about uh, it's about them and what they're doing. Yeah, like I, I don't I don't pick who we go visit based on who, okay exactly what they look like. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask you. So we have gotten flack for not having black people on our channel. We we got that when we were on the uh, anymore. No, it, I don't it, think we did. It, well, it I don't read to, comments anymore. We got that too. We got that too. In Same thing. Beginning. What we got that too. What we not thing. having not having black people. You're on black. Russia. She's white. Yeah, I don't know. And you got con you oh because yeah. your guests are all white. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, where do we well, get invited to? We go like, to other who, farms. I mean, who reaches okay. out to us? Been, oh, that's right. Like, you go feature Joel Salatern. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, so we were so under this in the Great American come. Farm yeah, Tour. Not, so, not always. So not, not everyone. Yeah. Like other people we have reached out to. But, I mean, if you are doing something and you want us to come visit. No. It doesn't matter to you. Yeah, I don't I don't, I don't, I don't, You're like, I'm not. I don't make a special case for, for, oh, I need to go visit this group of people because I got to have them in my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I need this group of people for me. No, it's no. not about that. Yeah. Yeah, I was That's, wondering how maybe you would. If somebody comes out with me with that, I, I don't even want to hear it. That's what do you mean with that? Like with saying like. You, oh, they're you, criticizing you, you for that. Yeah. a diverse group of people. Do you ever feel like somebody's approaching you just because you're black? Well, I don't take it that way. First off, I'm mixed. I know that's yeah. in in, a, in our society that's been kind of hard to accept, and there's a lot of background mm. and history with that. Anybody who's mm. mixed, they just get labeled as black. Ah, there's no, there's like that's a deep hole. So uh, I'll leave it at that. And I, uh, I'm not afraid to go there, but I don't know if we have time to go there. <laughs> <laughs> that had a nerve. <laughs> yeah, that's something I could get pretty passionate says, about. Yeah. I, and and this goes back to um, just some struggles I had as a kid. And I still remember my grandmother, who who is mixed as well, was mixed as well. She sat mm. down with me, and she's like, "You're not black. Oh. You're mulatto." 
and that's a mixture of black and white. I also have a Native ah. American ancestry as well. But that that I, I really appreciate that. I still remember to this day mm. her telling me that, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. I'll go look it up, and I looked up what it meant, and I was like, oh wow, that's pretty neat. But th- that has been instilled in me, and and for me, that is also shows honor to my full ancestry. Right. If I just said, hey, I'm just black, that totally denies everyone else that has gone before oh, me. Oh, wow. And that's no wrong. No matter what. I wouldn't, want, I wouldn't want my kids to do that. Mm-hmm. They're mixed. And just say that, hey, I'm black, and then totally dismiss my wife. Wow. And or the I'll, opposite. I'll touch on this. I'll touch on this. A, part of the reason that has happened in our culture has, is, is a part of the one drop rule and some of the mm-hmm. slaves or uh, the slave owners had children through the slaves and they were like, hope those aren't your children. But oh, wow. they really were part of it. But they got mm-hmm. pushed with, with the slaves. They wouldn't be brought in. Someone would be brought into the house as like the house slave. This is going a little further than I want, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it was like a denial. And that's what yeah. it's kind of been in our, cult- oh, wow. our, our society for a long time. And so many don't even know their full ancestry because of this. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Now, would that happen to the kids? Regardless, does does it always happen that what if what if the kid looked more white? That, uh, that does that happen? happen? Sometimes it's going the other way. Some of them used to pass as, as white. It has. What you call it? White passing. They used to pass uh, as white. There's a phrase for that. And I mean, I have our relatives. Kids, my great grandmother. You. What do your kids? What, what happens with your kids? Well, they just say they're brown skin. This is something. This is part yeah, of the like is that mulatto? More These serious. are mulatto brown. brown. They're probably so having. This is one of their hard yeah, discussions. Yeah. Like we have these discussions. This is what you talk about with your kids. This is one yeah, of the hard yeah, heritage. One I of want the them to know these things. Yeah. They properly identify. There's so many. So what do they feel? Like? What? How, what do you conclude? That, that you're. I just consider them to be mixed mulatto as well. So yeah. if they're if they're filling out a form and it's asking for your race, what do they say? When I had to do it as a kid, it was yeah, always other. other. It was it was one of the things I hated to do when I was a kid. Yeah, you're I saying even, this with Pat, like almost out of spite. Out. You're just gonna say other. Yeah, because yeah. every time we'd go to do you those SATs it's... and other tests, and they would have the they'd have black, Caucasian, the Caucasian uh, and white. Yeah. They would have Native American, and they would have Alaskan. I think is what yeah. it said, and then uh, other. I'm like, yeah. I could select a couple of these. I'm yeah. just gonna do other. Is that because they're not honoring your full heritage, or? Uh, yeah, you're you're what you are is not listed on there. Why are you getting upset about it? Why you get hot about it? Is it because your mulatto isn't listed? Uh, I feel like it's a lie if I just selected yeah. one, and okay. I feel like it dishonors people who've mm-hmm. gone before me. Mm. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I mean, and this is good. Yeah. Like this is I I didn't know any of that. No, so you've educated me on this. There's. Uh, the, the more mixture of people, you can start to see some some physical characteristics, just like you can with animals. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know some people get a little offended by going compare <laughs> animal comparisons, but you can tell if when just for example, if I have a goat that is Nubian alpine, you don't just say, "Oh, that's just a Nubian goat." No, you say, "My goat, my goat's a Nubian alpine." alpine. That's what that goat is. Mm-hmm. That tells you the full. You know, that's true. Of that. yeah. We have Jersey American milk and Devons. Yeah. So, so you why, wouldn't just why, say why, why would it be other. different with people? Yeah. True. I, yeah, there's no one drop rule for you. I do your sometimes cow. say, <laughs> Flossie, you saw her, the crazy eyed cow, that she's a Jersey. Yeah, because she's, she's only Jersey one Jersey. eighth Frisian, yeah. but she looks like a Frisian. Yeah, because then people will say, Well, why is she so dark brown? And yeah, yeah why doesn't she? Why does she not look like a Jersey? Why she got that crazy eyes. Well, sometimes that's the genetics, some of those things happen. So yeah. people come out dark yeah, and lighter. But it would be hard to say, you know, sh- break it down to all eight. Yeah, what if she was like. Kind of all over the place. Yeah. What if there was like eight things? Yeah. She just mulatto. So then you just mark other. <laughs> just mulatto. I got a mulatto cow. Just mark other. <laughs> <laughs> Have your, you sound like maybe you've suffered a little bit. Like maybe there's been some hard times because of um, this. Some people will, uh, kind of think that I automatically had, had dealt with racism from white people but actually yeah. it, not, it came from the other side a lot growing up so much so my mom because actually you were half out of a class because, because you were half white um that that happens too as well with people who are in and you aren't even as black white. that were were um what is he that are lighter yeah will get treated differently like both of his it's parents are mixed yeah so okay. both both so, of them just, so really like he's he's just mixed <laughs> so yeah I, I, 
And is like is mixed the correct term? I don't want to ever. I don't know if there is right. the correct term. Somebody. I think that's, a, well, that's, and I, that's what we have to be careful in nowadays. And I think it's a personal thing too. I think if too. somebody yeah. said mixed, if she said mixed, she would not be saying that out of racism or no. whatever it you would, would want to call that. It would be maybe yeah. racial igni- ignorance or something. It would. It wouldn't be not out of. It knowing. wouldn't be out of malign. But I, you wouldn't. I, I wouldn't take it that way. Offended. But, but other I can't. Might I can't be. tell you how other people will yeah. feel. Just because there's yeah, yeah. See, not enough of these kind of see. conversations in yeah, our culture. People aren't having conversations. That's the, a, a major part of why there's problems. We need to have these conversations because this is why. Why aren't we having the conversation? Because well, you started. I'll tell you why. I feel like we're not having the conversation. <laughs> Me? You can say why you don't think because it's a little bit uncomfortable. Yes, and I would never want to yeah, hurt yeah, somebody. Yeah. And, what if we hurt and, you? And um, not. I don't want to say offend because. I don't think that's the right word, but like it's an uncomfortable topic to yeah. talk about because it's been swept under the rug and and we don't want to talk about these things, but now we do. And so it's like, how do I bring it up? Well, it's and, so much in our society. Respectful. It's like you don't agree with someone and all of a sudden you're a racist. And that's not mm-hmm. even what has even transpired at all. Right. Yeah. To, and to, it's it's just the mislabeling of things. And then everybody gets angry and there's just no talking about it. Well, why do you feel the way that you do? What in your life has happened mm. to make you feel this way? Just like ah. he is not offended to be called mixed. But, but other people maybe. that this have had good. a different experience, a negative experience, may be offended to be called mixed. And it's just like this whole thing. And it's so complicated whenever yes. really, you know, we're all You guys all are people. always looking at the macro, which is good. Mm-hmm. Also, it's, well, why do you we think, come from what's, a... What's your we, thought of like There's why? a lot of thoughts that I have in this, but a lot of it is <laughs> coming from a place that I don't think human beings, men and women, know how to effectively communicate in general. To have just normal conversations and to ask each other questions. Oh. We make too many assumptions. We are also too easily offended. And then you have media and everything else pumping things to put yeah. people more on edge. Yeah. It makes it harder to sit down, have a loving, understanding conversation with a stable, balanced frame of mind. Yeah. When you're just already coming to on edge, all, automatically assuming somebody's a racist because they look this way, or maybe they said something wrong and they you didn't realize they didn't realize they said something wrong and offensive. They had no idea, but you already automatically uh, label them as something. Uh, harmful and wrong yeah. and discriminatory. Hmm. How it's it's kind of hard to have those conversations when you're dealing with all those factors. And we yeah. try to go back, like try not to be easily offended. Yeah. I mean, if you go back to that, like you know, should I really be offended about this? Yeah. Like, what nerve is it well, hitting? Wow. Maybe it's a little being... self mm. self reflection on why why am I so offended. In That's myself, we're really going through that right now. Like, if you we're ever, saying the word. ever offended or hurt, we're like, okay, why? Mm-hmm. What? What is it in me mm-hmm. that is making yeah. me do that? One why is this triggering me so yeah. much? Yeah. One of the questions that come into my mind, if I am offended, even in our relationship or with any other relationship, and somebody, I feel like somebody has done me wrong, I need to ask myself. Do I really feel like they meant me wrong in what they said or what they did? Mm. Most of the time, the answer is no. Right. But we first have to ask ourselves that question. Mm-hmm. Like if, say, she uses the wrong tone towards me or I use the wrong tone, tone towards her, I'm like, is she really meaning me evil by how she's done? Does she really want me to so, be vaporized or whatever? Does that mean, <laughs> That's does coming that across. mean, <laughs> does that mean you don't <laughs> confront her when she's hurt your feelings? As our communication skills, I feel like, are bettering, well, we're trying to work on that. I yeah, think that are. that's something that most people are ill-equipped for and do not work on enough is communicating. Well, we're not taught that as children. We're not. And I think so you do. You do tell her when she hurts your feelings. We, we, even though, we have been doing more and more of that. And, and one of the things we okay. do uh, is we're also having, we do our daily meeting as a family, but we're also having our meetings uh, together as just husband and wife. And we're like, all right, what did offended? What did it, something I did this week? Wow. That and, and that's something recently that we started. Because yeah. honestly, it, there, wow. there had been a lot of conversations conflict between us and you know it's hard to t- 
tell somebody that, you know, they offended you or it's easy to keep it bottled up and get mad. Sure mm-hmm. is. It's so much yeah. easier. And then so the past several it weeks. It's easier because it lets you off the hook. Yes, too. exactly. And that's another thing. And when you keep mm-hmm. it bottled up, that just it just festers and bitterness sits in. And it, yeah. And it's, it's hard to have peace when it, that just keeps yeah. growing and festering. I feel like we need to be more ready to be offended and 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 communicate that because our, we have a wonderful relationship and that's because we confront each other on everything. Yeah. Everything. We can't get away with anything yeah. Yeah. No. without getting in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but we have a really <laughs> solid relationship. I wouldn't but say it's... getting in trouble. I would say that. <laughs> so Justin, we started dating when we were 16 and so like we grew up together. Yeah. So like we just say everything. We talk about everything. But I think that that takes intentionality. It does. And work. Um, a, a blessing, but all at, at first was a really hard difficulty when we started working together as a family is mm. we spent all, all hours of the yeah. day with each other. Yeah. When we had our normal jobs, you can have a That's conflict. True. You leave for... 10, 12, 14 hours a day. Don't have to worry about that conflict that yeah. you have. You come home, watch and Netflix, and you just kind of tune uh, each other out. That was before texting. But right now, we're like, <laughs> we're forced to deal with these things when we work together. We have to do work through it to work together each day. Yeah. And, and like I said, we recently started, you know, being more intentional with, with We've saying We've been growing this. more and more, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. like really, like the other day, I was like, you really hurt my feelings whenever you did mm-hmm. this. Or yeah. you really did look mad all day long. It wasn't, you just in thought. And, yeah, I mean, he, that's he right. tells me. That's right. But it makes me, like you said, like I can't just throw it all off on him. Mm-hmm. I have to take responsibility for my offense, for being offended right. and be like, you know, yeah. he may not even know. That what he did. That's true. And mm-hmm. also seeing yourself on camera will definitely show you <laughs> how yeah. <laughs> angry you can be and something can come across. And that's not how you wanted to come mm. across, but that's how it came across. Because I've, I've heard myself many times. I was like, whoo, lazy. Yeah. Like th- yeah. that I've came across too. really critical and mm. really it's you know, that, really a big mirror. Yeah, yes. so I think. Because like how many times when we are upset do we have a mirror in front of us? Never. Yeah. Yeah. But then if you're filmed yeah. and you're upset, you're like, whoa. And okay. you hear it in your head. Mm-hmm. You're not hearing it outside of your body. You're not seeing your facial expressions. Yes, exactly. And uh, kind of go back to how we started the, the this chat here is uh, these are principles that are in the Bible again. God's ways work. And it talks about humility. Mm-hmm. Talks about not being easily offended. Yep. Also, trying not to offend other people is in there as well. Trying to not offend. Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People which, will offend um, you, which right. means you have to work on not being easily offended. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you also have to work on trying not to offend the other person. Maybe the way is to blend a little bit what we're going on here, where she's saying, we got to see why this is, think about why this is triggering. So, we we reflect before we confront. Yep. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Yeah, consider you know consider what's going on before we confront, and think about hey why I might be triggered. Think up think about it in terms of facts. Think about why that hurt me. You might really just pull something up from your childhood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you're going into this saying, did you mean what you said when you said this or that? You know, kind of coming in with a question, or I'm trying to think of ways maybe we've confronted each other. And then you could say, you know, I realize I have some things, and this is the way it made me feel. It's kind of hard to dispute that, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And maybe you didn't, and giving them the benefit of the doubt. We had some guests on here, they were big on giving benefit mm-hmm. of the doubt. Yeah. Yep. That, I think that's uh, a good approach as well. So, and like you said, you, you're, you're thinking, you, he, he probably gets the tone more, right? Like, I get the tone. You know, I'm just like, sometimes you're just going to say, hey, go get me the fork. You didn't say please. You didn't consider what was going on. You just said, give me the fork. You know, you got, you got to hurry up and get out the door. Fork? I don't know what I'm going to go do outside the fork. <laughs> Wrong but, fork is what it is. Uh, yeah. That's what I do. So, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, well, I think, honestly, what this is like make revealing to me, at least, is like we need to t- be teaching this to our children. We've been talking about that. On how to communicate so that our children, when they are in a a relationship, whether it be marriage or friendship, they can be able to communicate 
effectively with others. I and think be, be ready to apologize. Another thing yes. we should all ask ourselves is, am I willing to take correction? Yes. Am I willing mm-hmm. to take correction and admit mm-hmm. that I have been wrong on something? Actually, the other day, I, I was wrong in, in correcting one of our children. One of them got hurt. I, I assumed that they were just horsing and messing around. What normally happens. Instead of doing uh-huh. the chores. Yeah, it's hard when that's what's and normal. I exploded probably way more I sh- more than I should have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they were started crying and like, Daddy, I didn't do that. And I processed it, and I was like, I was wrong. And I went to him, and I told him, yeah. and I think oh, yeah. more parents should do yes. this. 100%. Admit to your kids Apologize. that you have been you done wrong. You did something that was not right, because that shows them the example that, hey, yeah. mom and dad can admit when they're wrong. Yeah. I need to be able to do that, too. And I, said, mm-hmm. I went to him, and I said, I am sorry, son. I was wrong. I just assumed that you did that, and I should not have done that. I was wrong. Will you please forgive me? Yeah. And he said he was crying, and he started te- clear- clearing it up and hugging yeah. me, and was like, "Yes, Daddy, thank you." And, and how how'd that make you feel? It made me feel good. I felt like a scumbag that I had <laughs> yep. did that, but I was yep. like, I, I was grateful that he accepted my apology. He even said, "I accept your apology." Oh yeah, I've had those moments where I felt so bad, and I'm almost tearing up, mm-hmm. and I bring him over and I hug him, and I, I know he's going to forgive me. Yep, kids always if, forgive. They're yeah. terrible to remember stuff. They're yep. terrible to not pick up after themselves. We're always on to them about those things. They are yeah. absolutely flat out amazing at forgiving. Yes, yeah. they are. It's amazing how yes. amazing you can, they are. They can forgiving. get in a fight. They can be jumping on each punch. If me and you got in a disagreement right now and we started punching each Watch other. Out. Please don't do and that. knocking over furniture <laughs> and they separated us. Are walk. we going to talk again in about seven and a half minutes uh, <laughs> more like seven and a half years right? exactly right. <laughs> You're right but the but you know our kids will do that yeah and just I'm like what is going on in here yep. <laughs> and then like oh see he did this and i'm mad and really you know and then and then we're like talk it out with them and then they run off yep go play and we're like one of our uh, kids hit one of the so other in the face with a stick, like made like this scar on their face. <laughs> they're like crying, and then a few minutes later, they're just they're playing just off playing together. Again. I was like, like "Man, okay. if I whacked you with well. a stick, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you hit me, it'd be a long time." Buddy. I know, right? Well, we always say that about Teddy because no, no, you know. Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> we leave Teddy at home, you know. I mean, we can't to bring a dog everywhere yeah. we go. So we'll he, he knows now, like he yeah. knows when we're getting ready to go. So if he can go with us, oh. then he get we'll let him out to get in the car with us. But if he can't, I'll say Teddy, I'm sorry, you have to stay home. And he knows, and he'll back away from, and he kind of gets depressed looking, <laughs> and he'll like lay there, like looking at us, like, are you really leaving me? And then we leave, you know, and we're gone for what at least two hours because you know you have to drive and then be there and then come back. So then we come home and he's just like like so happy to see us and i'm all like if you left me at home locked in this house i'd be mad, I'd be mad at you yeah, yeah. we let we, we went on a vacation in january and we left him we left him with a, a, a house sitter here at the farm because i was afraid he would try to run away and find us and then yeah. no one would ever find him um and so we had someone here for him and he was like so excited to see us, and I was like, "This is the weirdest thing." Because I would be mad if you left me on when I when you went on vacation. Yeah. If he left me at home, um, I know with somebody. I mean, he kind of knew her, but yeah, yeah like it's just okay. Funny. So back, back, and we're going back. Not up. that Teddy is a child, but still, <laughs> we're going to back up, and we're eventually going to get back to your movie idea. You're not the, <laughs> your series idea, which are really long movies, or it sounds like you have a TV show idea more like yeah. Um. Okay, so we had uh, a couple of black people on our show the last time. Now, they would refer to themselves sometimes as black people, Mm -hmm. sometimes as African-Americans. Yes. I realize there's some black people that are actually not from Africa, like I guess more recently, I mean, I I guess originally. Mm -hmm. But um, because I guess you had the Jamaicans, You you could come from another uh, country. Those kinds of things. Haiti. Yep. Yep. those kinds of things. But then um, they encouraged us to see color and to teach our children to see color. Mm-hmm. So I realized, though, they could have an opinion. You guys could have an opinion. But now you're teaching us, well, you know, it could be 
Somebody could look black, but they could actually be just as much white as they are black. Sometimes, yeah. Right? Yeah. In culture or heritage. I, would say I do not disagree with them in seeing color. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you need we need to acknowledge who we are, yeah. where we come from. Yeah. And uh uh but that doesn't mean we treat people differently based right. on what their color is. There's a there's uh, a yeah. there's a vast difference like there. Identity yeah. is important. Is identity is very important in, in, in so many different ways. Um when you want to raise a certain type of animal that has a certain type of characteristics on your homestead, identity is very important. You want to make sure you, if you're raising a chicken for egg production, mm. you don't want a Cornish cross right. or, or some bird that's going to put on meat and not lay eggs well, or whatever animal it is, a yeah. cow, a goat. A, uh, if I want a well, milk dairy goat, yeah. I want it to be a wow, dairy yeah, goat. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> but you're not going to be mean I'm not, to that, I, to that I, I treat other all, species. Exactly right. The animals will be treated the same way. I think that's where like don't see color came from Yeah, is that we don't want to either choose or um, discriminate against based on that. Yeah, I, I agree. But, but I don't I do think that the term see... has been defined. Nobody right. really know, don't that's see color. True. That means, oh, everybody, I don't see what you are. Yeah. But I mean, I do agree like with the like diversity, that. you know, yeah. like the diversity of celebrating that and yeah. seeing that and and celebrating well, I do have somewhat of an issue with that. It needs okay. to be everybody has their time of recognition and yeah. celebration. Not just one month or yes. one time period for one group and that group only. It needs to be everybody acknowledging their various backgrounds in different ways. I don't know how that would be. I don't have the perfect plan for it, but mm -hmm. it means everybody. It needs to be equality. Racism doesn't just come from one side, despite whatever the media tells you or whoever else. Yeah. Anybody can be a racist towards any other group of people or whatever negative term you want to come up with somebody. Yeah. But everybody also needs to be acknowledged and celebrated for who they are. Every single person is special. So you think they need a hat. There's Black History Month. I just saw on the calendar we're in uh, Women History Month. I believe. Then there's That's Pride much. Month in June. Is there a Native American month? I don't think there's enough months in the year to do this. You can't. This is why I don't there think would be, this what, is would a you have an track. Asian month? Um, I mean, I, get, I don't have the perfect I do, answer I have for to it, say, but I don't I, think there's enough months in the year to cover, cover everybody yeah. and do it properly. I think we're kind of setting us up, self up wrong this mm. way. So I mean, what should I, they do? Well, hold on a second. I do want to if, say this, that I think I understand where they were coming from with mm. this because uh, history books are written by who? Do you know the, what I mean? The, and so, the victors. But this is it. Like with history, like I'm looking at history that I learned, I'm like, is that really how it went down? Hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not denying that things yeah, how does, happened. Uh, I'm well, not denying that. I'm just saying that? like, because the victor is the one who does write the history. Yes. How does Braveheart open up? This is, this is, this is another complicated aspect of yeah. it is even if you two have a conflict together, you have your version of uh, mm -hmm. history. Exactly. Your own version of history. Uh -huh. <laughs> who's to say who is right? It's you true. can say the other group could write the history, but who's to say they're right? Right, it's true. The, it's there's gonna never going to be a perfect version of history going at it with that approach. Once again, I don't have the perfect uh, solution for it, but those are things to keep in mind. Everybody has their side of the story. But also, right. like we all have different cultural backgrounds. Mm -hmm. Why can't we... You know, dive into those and see what those are. And I don't know. I've always been curious about other people and different celebrations and things like mm -hmm. that. And I've, that's why, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard. I'm just like, why can't we just be curious I think and, and learn we, and about everybody? Mm -hmm. And we're going to, we're I, afraid we're going to offend somebody or we're yeah. afraid we're going to look stupid or ignorant. Yeah. We have to shed some of that. To have and, and not to make one better than yeah. the other. That's another yeah. problem. We don't we don't beat down one group to raise up another. We yeah. bring everybody up together. If we're if we're beating another group down to raise another group up, it's just going to create the a problem another way. Yeah, right. It will never it will never be good. Ships. Never right. be good. And where we're going right now, this is not going to be good either. I mm. mean, my kids will say like, "Well, why is mm. why are people mean? Like, why are people yeah. mean to each mm. other?" The heart, the heart is wrong, and, and even even some of the approach of they're trying to recognize another group. The, the heart isn't exactly right in the manner of being mean and evil towards it. You need to come with it with a forgiving heart and find a way to to solve the problem peacefully and on the same page and with love. 
to be able to, at the, at the end of the day, at the end of the conversation, reach across the table, whoever you're and give them a hug. Mm-hmm. Even if you don't agree. Even if you don't agree. Yeah, I mean. And to, to say in your heart, in your yeah. mind, that I love this individual. Yeah. Because we have gotten to a we point where if them. you can't agree with them, then you don't love them. Yeah. Or you can't be friends with them, yeah. which is crazy. Actually, that is insane. totally crazy. You, you we did disagree that. a lot. You guys disagree <laughs> oh, a lot. Oh, yeah. Probably. Like, we don't agree on everything. Oh, yeah. We have the verdicts out still. So many issues. And even, I'm not that many. <laughs> <laughs> and even with God, I'm like, God, I don't understand why you yeah. allow this or that. I still, I still got to love you, God. I don't know why you allowed this to happen in mm. my life. Mm. You still have to come back to that center. Love, it needs to be the center of it. If it won't, there will never, it will never work. Yeah. Whatever conversations you have, if there's not love there, it will never work. You, 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 you did that last night. I'm going to give an example so you don't have to think of it. We are eating dinner. We got bacon. Uh, did we have bacon? Is that what it was? We did have bacon. So the Rhodes family's eating bacon, and Big Daddy's eating bacon, and Grandma's eating bacon. You're not. Big Daddy's curious, you know. And, you know, since it's around meal, I don't know what it is about meals, but it's, you know, it can be, you know, it can offend. It can be sensitive well, if someone's not partaking. You know, Big Daddy wants why? to know, well, well, hey, why aren't you eating pork? And, you know, Big Daddy ain't scared to have a conversation, I no, guess, because he, he was like, well, what about when... <laughs> When Peter had that dream, St. Peter had that dream, and uh, God told him, get up, kill, and eat. It's not unclean. Well, y'all had a discussion. You had an answer for that. And y'all had a discussion, and you didn't You didn't hit him in the head with a stick. No, no, that. <laughs> That's not how it ended. <laughs> no. Christ never did that. No, I didn't. You'd have another meal to get together tonight. We were talking. No, see? See, we That's right. You did. It was so peaceful. Sometimes you can, the conversations can be tense. Yeah. Yeah. It was and just, everybody would know this is happening, yeah. right? Yeah. No, I mean, they I were mean, having it right over you. Yeah, actually, you were Mike sitting was sitting right, right there. here, and your dad was down he there, was and he was talking over me. Right I was having a hard time. Head. Like, oh, that's hilarious. I about said, Mike, why don't you go sit by Big Daddy? <laughs> well, I would have. I, there's, I, I can disagree I mean, I knew that or, they or did present. Talk, but I didn't even know it was about bacon. Yeah, it, it, and it's one of those things. I could see where it could make up people uncomfortable. I've had so many of these occasions throughout the years, and it's kind of like, okay. Let's That's the one they together. pull out on you, too. God he said, had his answer. <laughs> God said, be ready to give an answer uh, for, for the, the hope that, that lies, lies within, within you. And also to, to, to be loving. So I'm like, okay, this is why I do it. I need to be able to respond to him in love. <laughs> he responded in love. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> and I just pointed out, and I believe it's either Acts 10 or Acts 11. And this relates to the conversation that we're having mm-hmm. right now. The, the, the vision, the purpose of the vision, and you, you can go back and read in, in those scriptures. It wasn't about eating unclean meats Mm -hmm. it was about accepting all people as being clean not unclean because they because the jews saw people as unclean and then as the vision concludes peter sees that and understands that and that's when i believe the centurion man who was a gentile came and started following god's way of life yeah and he said god has shown me that all men are clean." and it was centered on love and god and they had peace so where you you said you're worried about the trajectory. Where where is it heading if we can't uh, peacefully disagree with each other? I think that the the heart of it is not centered in doing it God's way, and it will only create disaster. Hmm. Uh, it just create more people being angry, yeah. more people fighting, and evidence was of that all over the place when we had the riots and various things that are going on and people on edge. It's, it's not from a, a heart of love and compassion and forgiving and, and moving forward together. It's, it's, that's not the heart okay. there. The heart, is on, is, the heart is on mm-hmm. division. The heart is on raising another group up and beating other people down because they're this, they're racist, or they're this. They look one way. And, and it will not end peacefully mm-hmm. going with that trajectory. It has to be backed again, centered on God, centered on love, and moving for get together with forgiveness. If you had ancestors that, or I had ancestors that were mistreated by you or vice versa, we forgive and move on from that. I'm, we're interacting here together. That's what we focus on. Hmm. Focusing on in the past, that's not forgiveness. That's bitterness. And it, it's just, it will never achieve peace or happiness for anybody. The answer, to get that across, you guys were converted with a, a, a documentary. So many people other have. So we're back to your series. Be the change. Uh, <laughs> he's, 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 I can tell he's, 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 like, he's like, what have I done? <laughs> <laughs> I know, he's like, why did I fall into his trap? 
this guy, this guy has pushed me in so many different ways. And I appreciate now we're that. doing it with three cameras. I, I appreciate and that. our ladies. <laughs> you don't grow that. without being no. uncomfortable. I talked no. about that. Be we need that coach. I was a personal Who's, trainer, and I pushed so many people out of their comfort zone. And I so, who can training. you think of to be your first feature? Who has really seen a problem and and worked hard to become the change? Oh, oh <laughs> hey, you so would do that. Touche, <laughs> touche. Okay, all right. Well, dang, what did I sign up for? So, uh, okay, well then you have to make. You have to. I don't. I shouldn't say have to. Uh, you could. I challenge you. I I because we talked. We talked off off offline about how you want to get involved with abundance plus and where can you uh what can you do to create some original content that might be it might hmm. well i shouldn't say might maybe that's it well no he do could have another idea think about he it inspire this could uh, this could inspire and, and maybe else. it doesn't end up being me maybe maybe you don't go to be the change I, I don't see a problem with that i mean it's what we're talking about i uh, like be change there you go be change yeah yep Abundance Plus. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so now you're on the hook. Now people are going to see this and they're going to wonder where's the be like, where's the Mike, be change. Where's be uh, change? <laughs> where can I see this? Okay, at? so I'll be your guinea pig. I'll and, be your guinea you'll, pig. You'll you'll storyboard mm -hmm. where you want to go. You storyboard a documentary. Yep. With a nice little story arch. And if you don't know how to do that, you can talk to Mrs. Boob Tube okay. or call me up. Yeah. I did some of it before in my film stuff. Yeah. There you go. And uh, go for it. If we need to rent equipment or something like that. There we go. Dang. To make it feel legit, hire Jason to come be a second cameraman. There we go. He's getting excited now. Is that his excited? <laughs> a little his nervous. Excited? A little nervous. That's a little, a little nervous. A little excited. Yeah. So like, you're here. Like, it's March 1st. Like his palms down. <laughs> Bless him. Oh, it's I March am too. First. I'm like, hmm. She's all like, Mike, what you I get know, us this into? Is up my workload too. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's funny. But that's what it's about. But doing that's it together, good, man. People I will have like to it. Say this. Yeah. The, I'm telling you, our, the people really responded well to our show. Rooted. It was mm -hmm. more than worth it for our time financially. Yeah impactfully well and that's what i wanted with rooted i wanted rooted because see people see this they see this podcast they see our farm they see the people barn like all of this here already established and they're like well i can't get there you know that's too hard and i'm like no 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 no. you have no idea where we came from you know we came from Not nothing too. you are coming from nothing i remember <laughs> when we first met. Yeah. Sitting on the couch. Yeah, sitting on the couch. Talking, and I was probably crying my eyes And out. you were like <laughs> the first person I ever told that mm. we had to be on food stamps. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that was so hard for us because yeah. we worked and worked and worked. Mm -hmm. And it was just like we couldn't work ourselves out of it. We needed yeah. to be there. I think God allowed us to be there. Mm -hmm. because we couldn't work ourselves out of it we did everything it's not you know there's a stigma yeah there is. There's on a stigma. food stamps about well you just don't work right and you don't want to work mm -hmm. but that was the total opposite right of what we were doing i mean we were mowing our neighbor's yards he was picking up yeah. washers and dryers off the side of the road and scrapping them for money right mm -hmm. because we didn't we couldn't feed ourselves and whenever you're at a point where you can't even feed yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know people would be like, well, why didn't you ask us? Were you going to give me grocery money every month? Right. No. How long would that last? Right. Because you would not do that. You would automatically no. assume, well, you're not doing enough or whatever mm -hmm. else. But when you said y'all were too, I don't know. It's, it's that connection. It's yeah. like. You know, uh, we knew exactly where you were. Yes. You know, and it was nice to be in a place where somebody was like, you know, oh, I'm not alone. Like, we're working so hard mm -hmm. and still things aren't working. Yeah. And yeah, that's another reason that we love y'all so much is because it was just like the first family that we saw that was just like, Okay, you know, we mm -hmm. we can do this. We yeah. can come out of this. Yeah. And, at, at and all through that we're asking, why are we why are yeah. we in this position, God? Why are you have us going through this? 
And years later, it's like, oh, there's so many reasons why. Yeah, we I mean, it's so crazy. much. We learned yeah. so much. And I think that's why, because we can connect to more people. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, I've learned the trials that we have in our life is for us to be able to connect to other people. Mm -hmm. mm. And help them not feel alone. Yes. Yeah. Because you do feel so alone. Everybody feels I alone. I didn't know anybody on food stamps either. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, we didn't know anybody. And like whenever you talked about you used to hide your card because yeah. everybody knows the American flag uh, yeah. on there. You I did the, the same card. thing. I was like, and I would get anxiety going oh. and swiping my card. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, like, do we have enough? Wait in our till you account? have your mom with you or somebody with yeah. you. Yeah, you have to I, I, use that yeah. card. Yeah, I had my mom with me and I would hide it because I was so embarrassed. My I did. I did not want. Yep my mom to know that we were on food stamps. Yeah. Like that I, was mortifying. It was. And then yeah. that affects you as the man and provider. You're like, man, I am not doing my job. Mm. This mm -hmm. is terrible. And I mean, he was. Can't take care of my own family. Yeah. It hit you. I'm very I thankful. Know if it hit you, it hit yeah. me. <clears throat> That's why I have 2,000 videos on YouTube. Yeah. 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 It, it gave me the, the prod to do, to do more. There's a fire lit. Yeah. Somebody asked Justin on the tour, why do you stay up so late and get up so early and do this? And he said, because I've lived in poverty and I'm never going back. I've said something very similar. I was like, I don't want to go back to yep, that ever. No. I don't want to take my family through that again. No. no. I mean. I would do everything within my hum human ability to do it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to. I love you guys call it a family business. Yeah. I love how that is how it's centered. Like for Justin and I, we all, Justin always worked from home. You know, like we always work together. So sometimes I don't view it as a family business, even though that's what it is. It's because this is how we've always done. But because you guys were, you know, you worked off site and you, I'm a, you stayed home, I think, right? With the kids. Yeah. yeah so yeah. like, but you were apart, mm -hmm. but now you're all together. And so you're like, you have your family meeting. That's yeah. a fan for the family business. Yep. I love that. Like <laughs> it's so refreshing. And I'm like, man, we need to start calling it that. Cause that's what it is. I mean, like we have a family business and yeah. everybody has their part. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I tell, I tell everybody, I try to do it. I probably should do it even more. It's like, this is not my operation. This is our operation. Yeah. I was like, I cannot keep this place going without you guys. You guys are very important, every single one of you. Mm -hmm. It's true. Yeah. Micah has his own flock of chickens now. He takes care of them. <laughs> I was like, that's his. I help him if he needs it, but it's right. mostly his. Yeah. 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 No, we're the same way. What are y'all questioning now in your lives? Hmm. Good question. That's, that's a, a good question. It's questioning whether he wants to make that show for you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not say, sure he wants to do it. I kind of, I would say, I kind of have been thinking about this a little bit. As it's kind of like, like where next? God are you ultimately yeah. leading me? Like, mm -hmm. what is, um, like, what is? I don't know. I want to say pinnacle or whatever. Because when I first started homesteading and got into the market gardening, that was that was one of the main things. It was like I'm, I needed that to produce income so that we could uh, live a better life, and I could uh, because I got burnt out working in the fitness industry. And I, I loved it at first, but it got to the point where I absolutely hated it and I wanted to just have a, our own business. And then as I started getting into the market gardening uh, and just kind of seeing Jean Martin Fortier and some of those, and I, I saw that as just the thing that I would do. Mm. But then over, as the years have grown, it's kind of, feel, I, I don't, I feel like God wants me to do more than that. I, I don't mean that as a dig to anybody who's just mm -hmm. fine with being a farmer, but I feel like there's, he's got more for me to do than, than just, farming mm -hmm. and as our as we went through the years of homesteading we started off with doing it more for health and then it, it became more than that it became i want to live life together with my family and then as we started doing the youtube thing in addition to the health and in addition to family it was like i want to inspire others to to live a better life and start growing things and and i want to continue on with that and i don't know how far god will allow that to go but i want to inspire people in so many ways to to continue to grow things and live a more connected life to to the earth and to the animals but then to their families have better family relationships and then mm. better spiritual relationships i just want to i just want to be everything that god wants me to be mm. i don't know where that ultimately continues to go but that's that's my desire and I, I want them, I want to bless them with the uh, most abundant life as I can. That doesn't mean financially. I right. just want them to have the blessed life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that was my next question is, what are you questioning next? But I think you answered that. <laughs> what do you, you got anything to add to that, Lacey? No, I've been thinking about that too. Like what, what all, 
And I'll, it's, it's been interesting along the way, you know, the market gardening was first and, and we started the YouTube and now it's not so much market gardening and more homesteading. And it's also finding a place like where can our efforts go that impact the most people? Yeah. Hmm. Like our market garden. Yeah, it impacted our, our customers that bought from us and our locally. But as we grew our YouTube channel and we would get, you know, when we still get emails and comments and, you know, you inspired us to grow our first garden. Mm -hmm. You inspired us to get a flock of chickens or something like that. It's just like, where do we put our more energy into that's going to reap the biggest reward? Maybe not monetarily, maybe, you know, in somebody else's life. And, you know, like that's what we talk about a lot is give. We want to give to other people. And we want to give our energy where it's going to be the most impactful. And I think, you know, what we've been doing is that's, that's what we've done. We've kind of taken off some of the market garden stuff and, you know, put it in other areas to make it more beneficial, I guess. It reminds me of a quote and I may botch the, the quote, but it says, um, it's not about the amount of money you make, but the, the lives you impact. Mm. So that's kind of at the heart of what we do. If, Anybody really wants to know the heart of what we do? It's not about the money we make, but the the lives we impact. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, where are folks going to go to find this story? Well, they can check us out on the Fit Farmer on YouTube, Instagram, now TikTok. <laughs> You're the <laughs> Fit Farmer on all those the platforms. Fit farmer. Yeah. The Fit so, Farmer. And, Lacey okay. is Lacey is your mama, and yeah. soon to be on Instagram. Yes. Uh, be change. On Abundance Plus. On Abundance Plus. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> All right. All of the farmer content's on Abundance Plus. Yeah, too. that's yes. it there too. Ad-free on Abundance that's Plus. Right. That's right. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs>